Hey, we're back. We are starting a whole new chapter. Chapter four is on legal and ethical issues. Very important stuff. If you're going to be in the healthcare field, you have to understand um, how to function within the law and how to work ethically with your patients, um, not only to protect them, but to protect yourself as well. Uh, our first lecture, we have three objectives. Uh, the first is identifying patients' rights and responsibilities. The second is identifying resident rights and responsibilities. Remember, patients are in a hospital, residents are in long-term care. The third objective is to compare and contrast patient and resident rights and responsibilities. Now, to do that, what I would like you to do is kind of a homework assignment is grow a Venn diagram um, and, and submit that to me um, in class. So uh, if you've never done a Venn diagram, what you do is you draw two circles that overlap and in the center where they're overlapping, you kind of write out how the patient's rights are similar or the same and on the outskirts you kind of write how they're different and you can kind of see how they overlap if you have any questions let me know about that so let's get started here okay so as far as laws go we have to follow the laws for society you know the the government makes these laws and we have to follow them for society and, and for the benefit of all as well. So these patient rights um, kind of fall within that. They are legal um, rights that a patient in a medical facility has when they're receiving treatment. And they are first developed by the American Hospital Association. Um, and then they kind of developed through the years into what we now call the Bill of Rights. And um, basically, these are the things that all patients have the right to while they're in a facility. And then they also have responsibilities, things that they are responsible for um, letting us know and that kind of thing. So we're going to take a look at, at those here. Of course, the... Um, very first patient right sorry it's not cooperating with me there we go is that the patients have the right to consider it and respectful care when they come into a medical facility they have the right to be treated respectfully they have the right for us to um, treat them the way that they're supposed to be treated the second is that they have the right to be informed about their diagnosis treatment and prognosis now those are some big words so diagnosis means essentially what's wrong with them prognosis means what is the outcome and treatment, of course, is what we're going to do for it. So if I go to the hospital and they discover that I have pneumonia, I have the right to know that I have pneumonia. I have the right to know what they're going to do for it. Okay, are they going to give me an IV antibiotic? Or are they going to give me pill antibiotics? Or um, do I need to have an IV? And then the prognosis is how well or the prediction of the outcome. Am I going to recover from this? Am I going to die from this? Is it going to take two weeks? Is it going to be three days? Um, th that kind of prediction of outcome is what um, a prognosis is. The third patient right is that a patient has the right to make decisions about their plan of care and to refuse treatment. So if a doctor orders... Um, some kind of shot a patient has the right to refuse that we cannot just automatically give it to the person if they say they don't want it if they say they don't want it we have to abide by their wishes they have the right to refuse that um, but we'll talk about uh, some of the consequences of that here in in a few minutes but um, they do have the right to refuse it they might have to sign some papers saying that they did in fact refuse it but they do have that right um, and they have the right to make some decisions, like do they want to go home a day early, do they want to take it easy, you know. It all depends on the case-by-case -case situation, but they have the right to kind of participate in that decision-making pro process. I'm sorry. 
The fourth right is that they have the right to specify their wishes in advance if they become unable. And we'll be talking about that in more detail later in this chapter. Um, they're called advanced directives. So if I would become unable to make decisions for myself, say I was in a car accident or something, I have the right ahead of time to put somebody in charge of making decisions for me or spell out what exactly I may or may not want in that case. Resident right, I'm sorry, patient right number five is the right to privacy. So that's all that health information. There's actually a law called HIPAA, which shells, stands for Health Information Portability and Accountability Act. It is basically a law that specifies who, who you can share information of your patients about. So I, as a nurse, can only share information about my patients with the other people that are taking care of that patient. Um, if I see my patient's wife, sister, mother, brother, cousin, best friend out in the um, grocery store after I've just taken care of them, I can't go, hey, so Joe is doing so much better today. I can't do that. Uh, you cannot share information outside of the without with the patient themselves or other people taking care of them. It also covers things like you can't talk about patients in open public areas. You can't um, be in the elevator discussing a patient where there might be other patients around. You can't leave charts out where other people would be able to see them. All of those things um, would be an invasion of privacy for that person. So you can't do things like that. Those, that's a law you have to follow. You can't share information and, and that kind of thing. Um, it kind of is similar to the next patient right, which is confidentiality. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. A little bit different with the privacy is that it can also include things like shutting the door. Like if I go in to give somebody a shot, I'm, I can shut the door. Or if I go in to do therapy or things like that, pulling a privacy curtain. Um, those kinds of things also fall under privacy. The next patient right is that they have the right to review their records related to their medical care and have information explained to them. So in other words, a patient can um, see their records and if they don't understand it, the doctor has the responsibility of it, or nurse or whoever is in charge has the responsibility of explaining to them what exactly that means because not everyone's gonna know what these tests mean and what the results mean just by looking at them. The next is that they have the right to suggest alternatives or transfer to another facility if they choose. They have the right to be informed of business relationships that might affect their care. Maybe um, the hospital has some kind of agreement that they only get their equipment from this supplier. You know, So you as a patient of that facility have the right to know that if you would choose so. You have the right to participate in or to decide not to participate in experimental studies. That's pretty self-explanatory there. You have the right to know what your options are when you get discharged from the hospital. Can you have somebody come check you out after, like home health care, or is that not allowed? You know, those kinds of things. And then you also have the right to know how a hospital settles its disputes, what they charge for their services, and what options there are available for payment. Can you write out a check? Can you pay a credit card? Can you set up a payment plan? Um, what do you charge for an x-ray of the wrist? Uh, those are all the kinds of things that you have the right to know when you're a patient in the hospital. Now, as I said, patients also have responsibilities. So yeah, they have these 12 rights, but they also have seven responsibilities. The first is with, of which is to cooperate. They're expected to cooperate. They should not be hitting you. They shouldn't be pinching you or anything like that. They're expected to cooperate. They shouldn't be calling you names um, and that kind of thing. They are uh, responsible for respecting the property, comfort, environment, and privacy of other people. 
That's kind of a, a loaded one, especially when you're talking about, you know, when patients have to share rooms. Sometimes you find out a lot of information about your roommate if you have to share a room in a hospital. Um, or if there's only one TV in the room, you know, you shouldn't be arguing over. You need to take turns, that, that kind of thing. Um, comfort that could go with heat, all that kind of thing, their temperature wise. So basically just being respectful of other people as well, um, if I had to sum that one up. The third is that they are responsible for trying to understand and follow directions that they've been given. Like they can't just ignore what we tell them and just deliberately do the opposite. They need to try to do what we tell them to do. We're not telling them to do something for us, we're trying to make them better. Um, so they're responsible for just trying to follow those directions. They're expected to provide us with an accurate and complete information about their health status, answering all the information truthfully. So if they're on medications, if they are, if they know something about their health, they are expected to tell us we can't make the best decisions if you aren't completely honest um, about your health so and sometimes things that you would think that are completely inconsequential um, are very important when it comes to helping us figure out what is going on with a person you're responsible for paying for your services you're responsible for informing staff of medications that you brought from home. You can't just bring um, Tylenol from home and take it whenever you want. When you're in the hospital, the medicines that we give you could interact. Even something as simple as Tums, um, the calcium could interact. So anything that you bring from home when you're a patient in the hospital, you're responsible for telling the nurse that or the doctor that you brought it from home and asking if you can take it, you can't just help yourself to it um, because we need to know what we're doing. Even some, um, some medications that you could take over the counter might interfere with some kind of food that we give you. So it's very important that anything that you bring with you as far as medicines, herbs, um, vitamin supplements, anything like that, that you uh, inform the medical staff of that. And last but not least, this was the one I kind of hinted at earlier, you are responsible for accepting the responsibility for consequences of any treatment that you refused. So let's say that someone had a heart attack and a doctor told them that they needed a heart um, catheterization, which is when they run a tube up through the leg and look around inside the heart and try to take care of the heart. And they decided they didn't want that and they refused to it. So they have that right. They have the right to refuse that treatment. As I said, they might have to take a paper, or sign a paper saying that they do refuse it in order to protect the doctor and the nurses that are taking care of them. But if that same person then, after they refuse, walks outside those hospital doors and in the parking lot has a major heart attack, they have to accept the responsibility for that. Um, it's not the doctor's fault at that point. They recommended that you had a heart attack catheterization and you refused it. So you have to take the responsibility for your refusal. So those are patient rights and resident rights. I'm sorry, patient rights and responsibilities. So now let's look at resident rights. They're very similar in a lot of ways. There's a few small differences, so we'll see if you can pick up on those. But a patient, a, a resident in a nursing home facility, and I'm going to apologize right now, I have only ever worked in a hospital, so sometimes my mind just automatically says patient, but when I'm talking about um, nursing homes, I actually do mean a resident. So resident right is that they have the right to choose their own physician, participate in the planning of their own care, have preferences and voice grievances. So even though I'm a patient at a resident, <laughs> at a nursing home, I still can choose my own doctor. I can still have my own doctor come in and take care of me. I don't have to use the one that's at the facility or, or what have you. I have the right to privacy and confidentiality. So those two are listed together here. They are the exact kinds of things that we talked about before with patient rights. Residents have those same rights to expect privacy, to expect confidentiality confidentiality that their information isn't going to be shared. 
They have the right to be free from physical and psychological abuse, um, including the improper use of restraints. And we're going to talk about restraint use in Chapter 10 when we get there. Um, so, and abuse is another one of those things that's highly regulated and highly um, looked at for to make monitored kind of thing. So they have the right to be free of that. They have the right to receive visitors and share a room with their spouse if they are residents at the same facility. So even though they're residents, people can come visit them. That's you know kind of common sense. But what a lot of people don't realize is that if a husband and wife are in the same nursing home, they can still share a room together. And you may see that um, when if you come back next year at clinical. They do have one, two, maybe even three couples that actually share a room um, down at the medical center. Um, I don't know if you've ever been down there. It's kind of set up where one resident's on one side and one's on the other. And what they have done for at least the one that I know about is move both beds onto the same side and created like a bedroom for them. And then the other one, the family's brought in furniture and they kind of have like a sitting area. So it's kind of nice for them that their visitors can come in and kind of relax in their own room and that kind of thing as well. They have the right to use their own personal possessions. I kind of hinted at that when I said um, that they can bring their own furniture. They can bring their own lamps and and that kind of stuff as well. The only kind of rule with that is, is for safety reasons, anytime that we use something that is electric, we do have to um, have maintenance look at it first, make sure that it's safe to use before we use it. They can bring their own clothes, their furniture, what have you. They have the right to use their own things. They have the right to control their own finances, and a lot of people find that surprising, but they are allowed to write out their own bills and, and paychecks and buy things and things like that as well. Um, they have the right to be informed of any Medicare and Medicaid services that they're eligible for as well. They have the right uh, to have the information about the facility's um, compliance, which means uh, whether or not they follow the rules of the regulations. If the facility is planning on changing any kind of arrangements for them as far as how they're living, what services are available and what um, fees are going to be charged to them. They have the right to stay in that facility unless a uh, transfer or discharge is required because of their health status, because they can't pay, or because the facility closes. They have the right to organize and participate in groups, and when you are in a nursing home, you'll see a lot of different groups going on, and it, they have different activities for them and things like that. They have the right to information about advocacy groups. And last but not least, they have the right to work at a facility, either through volunteering or being paid, but under no obligation are they required to work. In other words, um, if somebody wants to work there, and they can, whether it be a volunteer job or a paid job, um, but they can't say, well, in order for you to live here, you have to do this. They can't do that. Um, and a good example that I have is that I know that a resident at the medical center used to be paid to deliver mail um, and he got paid for it. Now there are some circumstances that it might be a volunteer job but in that case it was that he did get paid. So that's just an example. There might be other types of jobs that a resident might be able to do at a facility. But So as you can see um, a lot of the um, things overlap. They have very similar rights, very similar responsibilities. So what I want you to do is draw that Venn diagram and compare them and hand that in to me so I can see that you can see how they're alike and how they're different. Um, but if you have any other questions, shoot me an email and I will see you next time.